Greetings, it's now Monday and uh, we've had the weekend because that's what generally happens before Monday. Um, back in on the C6, the C6 is still on the ramp, which is a pain because it shouldn't be. It's uh, fair to say the job's taken me a fair bit longer than I thought it would, but then that's a reoccurring theme. Every big job seems to take longer than you think it would. Um, so what I'm on now, I'm still technically taking things apart. Um, we've got here the uh, the wishbone. So this is the wishbones in a vice. You can just see I've removed the bush there. Um, clean that up. See if I can put this in without ripping it to pieces. Based on all the grief uh, that I had with the other bush, I'm hoping this one will be more straightforward. Just a bit of washing up liquid. In the gaps, just to make it slippy. Right, hopefully, yeah, the bottom's starting to go in. That's good. Oh, I think that's going quite well, actually. This is what it should do. Oh yeah, pulling it, not even touching it. There you go. That's gone very well. I might even be able to... There you go. Sweet. And then the last thing to do, they supply it with some grease. Which you just squirt inside doesn't actually need too much this one because that's the tube inside this isn't going to rotate because it's mounted vertically which I don't really like to be honest I don't know why manufacturers do this I'm sure there's a reason what to do with changing the geometry as the suspension compresses or something I won't be able to push this in by hand it's going to be no oh, no I might be able to oh yeah look at that There we go, so load of grease, lather it up this one because it's basically going to be working quite hard. In theory, this will just push straight on. Yeah, it's going. There we go. So on the old arm, this would have been a bonded bush. So it would have twisted this way and twisted that way. Uh, and each time it twisted, it would have been trying to tear the bush apart. And, the, and it's kind of like the bush's elasticity would be what was governing how far it could move. But with this now, it's just a bearing. Although it's so tight, it's trying to work its way off. It won't do that on the car because it'll be pinned in position. The uh, last part I've got to take apart because this is, I think, the last component I need to dismantle that I'm doing the suspension and everything with, uh, is this hub, which was from the driver's side. It did hum like a good one when you used to drive it down the road, and I was hoping it was the CV joint, because I was planning to change that anyway, because when you put it on full lock and pulled away, you got a lot of creaking and clacking and horrible noises, and obviously it's had MOT history of dubious uh, integrity um, because it's had so many different CV boots fitted it's obviously past it but the bearing is clearly knackered as well it's had a new bearing on the near side already according to the service history so that needs to come off um, and what I'm going to have to do is obviously I've had to break the ABS sensor which the remains of which are here I've got a new one um, this bit here is the back of the hub flange on the front so I need to press that out of the bearing first I think that's going to be the easiest thing to do and then in fact it's it's the only way it can be done um, and then when I've done that there's a big circle up here which I'm hoping isn't rusted in um, and to remove that and then press the bearing out from the other side once the hub flange has been removed um, and then installation is a reversal of removal 
and then I put the new ABS, the new ABS sensor in, which has arrived, the genuine one, genuine Citroen one has arrived. I also, I'll do this later on, on the end of here, much like with the back of the wishbone, there was the shell from the inside of the old bush. Well, that's the shell from the inside of the old bottom bearing, pivot bearing. That needs, I mean, it might come off with a couple of taps of the hammer because they're not normally, they're not press fit. New. Yay, hub flange is off. Gone really well. No, it hasn't. Look. This bit is the hub flange. This bit is the bearing race that's supposed to be part of the wheel bearing, but is stuck to the hub flange because it came apart in the vice. Lots of big ball bearings, look. Not vice, press. I would not have been able to do that in a press. That was about 10 tonnes to get that shifted. So now I need to get the bearing race, uh, circlip even, out of here. And I'm hoping it will grip it in the vice, but it probably won't. Alrighty ho, let's see if this one does it. These are big circlips. And that hole is full of grit for a start. No. Oh. Had a feeling that might be the case. All right, I'm going to try and get rid of this maybe a sensor. Just be better if you just pop out, to be honest, but I'm guessing you're not going to. Come on. All right, let's try this. Oh, wow. Why can't anyone invent a glue that's this strong? <laughs> now that's stuck. That was needlessly difficult. Fly out across the workshop in a minute. <sighs> well, it just about came out in one piece, so in theory, I could reuse that if I get desperate. Hopefully I won't be. That was an absolute I now have some pressing matters to attend to. There we go. Most of a new bearing. Getting this off of here. Now I'm going to have to cut it, I think, and that's going to be difficult to do without damaging this. There we go. One replaced wheel bearing. <sighs> right, that was an absolute fight, that was. Right, the new joint's on. Um, it's a bit loose, but I've never done one before, uh, excuse me, before, so it might be that when it's put in tension, I mean, if you squeeze it on tight, it, it feels like it's all right, but it might be that when it's under tension, it's, uh, it has no play in it, but other than the ABS sensor, that is about that. <sighs> Six o'clock, 
still going. Uh, yeah, so it's not back together yet, um, but it's getting there. So the wheel bearing really held me back, but I've just cracked on and got a, a bit more done on it just to try and get the thing off the ramp. The wishbone for the driver's side has done the bushes for that. That's on, that's fitted. The new drive shaft's in. I've replaced the bolt that retains the drive shaft, the one that wouldn't come undone. Uh, I've done the steering rack boot. Um, I had to disconnect the brake hose because I refitted all the upright and everything and then found that I hadn't passed the brake caliper through. So it was either a case of take it all apart again or disconnect the brake hose, lose a bit of fluid and have to bleed the brakes back in. But seeing as I don't know when the brake fluid was last changed, not the end of the world. So now, really all that's waiting for is a track rod end, the brakes, um, and the last sort of fittings and everything like that in the uh, in that area. Um, and obviously I've got the arch liner and everything to go in. Uh, I can't put any of that in yet because I need to fit me my uh, ABS sensor. That is a genuine article, so I shall fit it. Um, I was going to put some grease or something on here to stop it rusting it in again, but I don't want to interfere with how, you know, it's all done on resistance, isn't it? That's got a magnet on the end. I, I don't necessarily want to muck around with that so I think I'll just fit it as it is so that just goes in there where the old one went oh yeah it just it just slides right in now I've got to get the old screw out with that socket sometimes this works not this time right so that's the new ABS sensor in <laughs> all the way around going the way it's meant to and then it's supposed to go up through there although oh yeah yeah I meant to go up through there but uh, I'll do that another time uh, I haven't done up the bottom joint uh, bolt here the pivot bolt because that needs to be done up when the car's at normal ride height if I do it up when it's on high when it goes down to normal ride height, it will permanently have the, bu the bush in a state of tension. So I need to do that when the car's back on the ground, when it's not on droop like it is now. Um, track rod end's probably the next thing I need. And then when the track rod end's on, brake disc, then a caliper carrier, push the pistons back in, fit new pads, bolt it all back up. Do you remember the Cecily videos where I was flipping my biscuits about track rod ends not having lock, uh, lock nuts on? Same brand. I've just gone to put the uh, brakes, or just gone to clean the brakes, and uh, was going through the stuff on the floor and realised there was something I was meant to order. That's the retaining um, spring, if you like, to hold the brake pads into the carrier. And I noticed it's, if you'll be able to see it, I hold it up to the light properly. There you go. Cracked. Bit of brake cleaner to get all the grease off. Seeing as I've had these discs in the boot of the car for over a year. And these are actually, they're not badge genuine, but they are actually genuine, well, genuine, just non-genuine packaging. Genuine parts is non-genuine packaging. So these are a, a bit of a result finding these. Right, get, swing that out of the way for a minute and then turn. Right. New discs, new pads, new drive shafts, new bushes, new wheel bearing. Oh, you are spoiled. Right. So I need my pads, don't I? There we go, and the short one can go there. 
Ah, oh, I haven't pushed the pistons back in. Map it. Uh, right, there we go. Um, forgot to turn the camera back on when I went to put everything back together, but nothing to really see. So the pads are fitted, pistons are pushed back in. They went back in nice and free. The sliders are moving nicely. I've uh, hooked up all the brake warning wires nice and neatly, and then realized that the plug that goes in the back of them has been locked off. That would go in there. So I've got no brake warning, it doesn't really matter. Um, all the new components, you can see the purple bushes, they look blue there, but they're not the purple. They have the spacers underneath. You can just about see. And that has changed the angle that the arm is sitting at. It's much more raised at the back. Well, in 10 mil doesn't sound a lot, but I think in this uh, scenario, that will be quite a lot. 10 mil is, is quite a bit quite a bit of difference of the uh, angle of inclination to change so yeah it's pretty much there um, I'm just going to put some under seal on this I need to put the arch liner back in and build all this back up uh, and then I'll have to bleed the brakes because I've opened the hose up but I need mean, to be honest it could probably use it anyway um, and I need to plug this in so I need to go up to the engine bay and uh, pull pull out the um, remaining one in here and push this one through. So yeah, this is the passenger side arch. So yeah, brakes are in the same kind of state the other ones were, all needs cleaning up, greasing, pads fitting, blah, blah, blah. The wishbone needs to go in, the dryer shaft needs to go in. I've done the lower pivot bush. I'm not doing anything with the upper ball joint. The one on the other side, obviously I said I re-greased and changed the gator on it. Um, but uh, other than that, um, I won't be doing too much more. Um, so there's not really a huge amount to see.